God bless, God bless. It's me, Denature Thomas. We keep it a real GBP. God before business, before pleasure. Real talk. And we're talking about the Lord. We'll be in Jeremiah uh, chapter 2 and chapter 3. Uh, listen to the Lord. But right now we're getting ready to uh, pray and listen to the word of God because the presence of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. The Lord is here regardless of, you know, all over us. Heavenly Father, we just give you the glory, the praise, the honor, and thanksgiving for all things that you're doing in the mighty name of Jesus. We woke up in the presence of your greatness, full of your joy, saying hallelujah, hallelujah. Holy, holy is the almighty God, the one that was, the one that is, and the one that's still to come. <laughs> hallelujah, amen. Lord, saute and simmers in your son's blood in the mighty name of Jesus as you go out there before us, as you're around us, as you're behind us, side to side, Lord, you and your angels and your Holy Spirit, Lord, we just thank you and we glorify you, Lord. We thank you that you will live in the presence of your greatness, full of your joy. We thank you for the providing. You are Jehovah Jaru, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace, and what's in heaven to be on earth, Lord. We thank you for the healings, the deliverance. You are the way maker. You are the promise keeper. Lord, you are the life of us, Lord. We surrender, submit all will to you. Lord, we put, we entrust our spirits into your hands because... You care about the anguish of our soul, Lord. We thank you for all that you're doing, Lord. You was the way maker before we was even existed, before we was even thought of. You made sure we had the protection that we need, Lord. And Lord, we trust you, we love you, we adore you. And Lord, you are the head and we are the body, Lord. And we thank you for all that you're doing for us, Lord. As the prosperous spirit goes out, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen to our Lord, to our God. Lord, we love, we love you wholeheartedly, Lord. Father God, we love you wholeheartedly. We're in love with your son, the Holy Spirit, the angels, and our brothers and sisters as we love ourselves, Lord. And Lord, anybody that's going through any type of depression, anxiety, Lord, anybody's going through anything of cancer, Lord, AIDS, HIV, anybody that's going through any type of sickness, Lord, I ask you to put your hands of mercy upon them, your hands of healing upon them, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, as you lead them and guide them and tell them to trust in you and you're going to cure them, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare this out of the creed and I put it in the blood of Jesus. Lord, Jesus, whatever I ask you for, you will do, Lord, and I'm asking you, Lord. To heal them in the mighty name of Jesus, spirit, mind, body, and soul. Lord, I'm also praying for more knowledge, wisdom, and understanding for all your children, myself included. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. So it can be one spirit, one mind, one body. For what's in heaven to be on earth. In Jesus' name, I say amen. Yes, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to turn that off. We got to get back to the word. This is my second time doing this. But the simple fact is, we're trying to make it all in one segment. And it was in two. And plus, I had a shirt that was very, uh, show, you know, show. And I'm like, I don't like that. And he didn't like it either. He said, do it over again. I'm like, oh, Lord. So anyway, we need to open up our words first. Then we're going to open up our words too. And not your words, not my words, but God's words. I'm in the Life Recovery Bible. Also, I have the King James Version that my mother gave me, the Life Application Bible. We want to turn, turn your Bibles to Psalms uh, 19. We're going to start off with verse 11 because this is what... You know, God is telling us, we don't even know ourselves, but he knows us. And this is what we're praying. So we're going to start at Psalms 19, uh, verse 11, but we're also going to Jeremiah. If we have some time, we'll also go to uh, 1 Corinthians 14. In Psalms 19, we're starting at verse 11. He says, we can't even start off at verse 11. I apologize, you guys. I did this once before. We got to start off at verse 7. The instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making the wise simple. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart, because that's what he does. He brings joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are clear, giving insight for the living. Ravens of the Lord is pure, lasting forever. Hallelujah. Amen. The laws of the Lord are true. Each one is fair, because everything he says is fair and just, because he provides for both. The morals... The more uh, they are more desirable than gold, even the finest gold. They are warning to they are um, sweeter than honey, even honey dripping from the cone. I'm going before myself. They are a warning for uh, to your servant, a great reward for those who obey them. God says, Obey all of these. We live by the Spirit, but the morals of God never change. Hallelujah, amen. And right here on 12, it says, how can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. And, and, and that's what we got to ask. God cleanses us from these hidden faults. God knows us when we don't even know ourselves. Hallelujah. Amen. He made us. He is, he, we have his spirit and he knows the things we're going to do wrong. But he said, come to me, my children. Keep your servant from deliberate sin. Do not let them control me because sin does not put control us when we're in that right spirit. 
Then I will be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock, my redeemer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Because that's who he is. That's who he is. Now, y'all need to open up y'all words to Jeremiah chapter 2. As we sit up there, and I urge you guys to read all of Jeremiah chapter 2 and chapter 3. It is so beautiful. It's what God wanted us to study at. Uh, if I'm talking too fast, please forgive me because I'm trying to give you all as much as I can. And I only got like 25 minutes left. Uh, I need something that's going to record that I can upload. I need to be taught a lot of things that uh, I'm not. I don't have no money, so I just do the best that I can. It says right here in uh, Jeremiah uh, chapter 2, the Lord gave me another message. He said, go and shout this message to Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says. I remember how eager you were to please me as a young, listen, as a young bride long ago, how you loved me and followed me even through the bare wilderness. In those days, Israel was holy to the Lord, the first of his children. Hallelujah. Amen. So right then and there, he's giving you some word. The first of his children. See, the Lord knew that he was going to gather all his children. The Lord knew us before we knew ourselves. He knew that he was going to place us all over the world, and he's going to get, he's going to get all his children. Remember in the word of God, the, uh, Jesus Christ says to the Father, Lord, I have not lost not one that you entrusted in my hands. Hallelujah. Amen. Because we're marked. We're marked with the blood of the Lamb. We're marked in our hearts. We're marked with love. Hallelujah. Amen. And we do fall short of his glory, and we, got, we, we get caught up in this world. It says right here, all who harm his people were declared guilty and listen, listen and listen to this. And a disaster fell upon them. I, the Lord, have spoken. So God is telling us, don't revenge is his. If somebody sits up there and they harm any of his children, he's going to put disaster on them. And even when a child of God goes there against the child of God, we still got to be disciplined because God disciplines the ones he loves. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, listen to the words of the Lord. People of Jacob, all you families of Israel, this is what the Lord, it says, this is what. Then it capitalized and bold and uh, explanation, uh, question, uh, explanation points. Um, what did your ancestors find wrong with me? So God is asking us the questions. What did your ancestors find wrong with me? There is nothing that nobody can find wrong with God, period. He is a love. He's an honest. He's a faithful. He's a merciful. He's a grateful God. So our ancestors didn't find nothing wrong with him. We ain't found nothing wrong with him. The wrongness was in us. <laughs> okay. That led them to stray away from me. So God says, why, why have you strayed away from me? What, what did I do? He did nothing at all. He said they worship worship idols only to become worthless themselves. God says, man, y'all worthless. Because you're not doing my will. You're doing your own will. You're being caught up in this world. You're getting caught up in. Oh, let's keep reading. They did not ask, where is the Lord who brought us to, who brought us safe, safely out of Egypt or led us through the bare wilderness and lit and the land of desert and pit, a land of drought and death where no one lives or even travels. So he's telling us about the lands that they went through, but he brought us through it. He brought, he, he's, as he's bringing us through COVID-19, as he's bringing us through cancer, as he's bringing us through AIDS, as he brought us through the swine flu, as he brought us through all the things of the past, because he's a loving and faithful and forgiving and merciful God and a healing God. And when I brought you into a fruitful land to enjoy the boundaries and the goodness, you defiled the land, devout my land. So he says, we defiled his land and we did. We defiled his land by prostitution. Yes, we did. We def defiled his land by coming corrupt, by sitting up there, uh, the, the love of money, the love of a man, the love of a woman, the love of, uh, the love of uh, furniture, the love of cars, uh, following the things of the world and not following God. So this is what he says. And corrupted, listen, we're going back, to enjoy its boundaries and goodness, you defiled my land and corrupted the, corrupted the uh, possessions I have promised you because everything that he, he promised us, we corrupted it. We corrupted by wanting more and not want by wanting more of things and not more of God. It says the priest did not ask, where is the Lord? Question mark. Those who taught, listen, those who taught my words ignored me. They, uh, the rulers turned against me. So he said, listen, and the prophet spoke in the name of Bella, uh, waiting their, their, uh, wasting their time on worthless idols. So God is telling us right now. Prophets have turned away from him. Prophets have turned away from him. The evangelists have turned away from him. Not all, but a lot of them. 
uh, preachers, ministers. That's what he's saying. He says they're seeking things of the world and not, not me, not him, not God. You got to be careful out there. And, you know, this is what he said. And this is where we at. He says, listen to this. Number four, number four, it says, therefore, I will bring my case against you, says the Lord. I will even bring you charges against your children. Listen, your children's children in years to come. So he bring cases against us. He's like, you know what? Y'all sit up there. Y'all, y'all greedy. Uh, y'all acting needy. When I have already provided everything that y'all need, anything that you ever want, I gave you the land of fruit of honey. I told y'all to come together as one spirit, one mind. Let me lead you and guide you, not man. And he tells us over and over, you will see the fruits of my spirit. And he just keeps saying, you will see the fruits of my spirit. You will see the fruits of my spirit. You should know the difference in the devil and me. And we're supposed to know the difference, point blank, period. But God sits up there. He gives us exactly what we need to see and do so we can come back to him because he's a merciful, kind, and forgiving and compassionate God. Now we're on Jeremiah chapter 3. Jeremiah chapter 3, it reads like this. Jeremiah, and we're on verse 1. If a man divorces a woman and she goes and marries someone else, he will not take her back again. For that uh, would surely corrupt the land. But you have prostituted yourself with many lovers. God is saying you prostitute yourself with clothes, furniture. You prostitute yourself with cars, material things. Yes, he wants us to have nice things. But when these things come before him, if you got a man or a woman that's coming before God, if you're loving money before God and you're seeking money, a woman, a man, or furniture, houses and clothes before God, you're prostituting, you're corrupt. That's what he's saying. You know, the thing we're supposed to seek first is God. Hallelujah. Amen. Only God. So it says right here, he says, many lovers. So why are you, why are you trying to come back to me? God said, why are you trying to come back to me? Here y'all going through something, COVID-19, because y'all greedy for money. Y'all doing the things that is wrong. So why are you coming back to me? And so we got to just keep on going. Just, Lord, I can't go before you, says the Lord. Look at the shine. Listen, listen at the shinings on every hilltop. Is there any place you have not defiled? So God says, all over this earth, you have defiled the land. When we defiled the land, we defiled our bodies. We defiled the spirit. When you come into that righteous will, oh Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. When you come to that righteous will, he's going to cleanse you from all this. But we got to keep on reading. By your adulteress, and everybody he's talking about is adulteress. Because you got to understand, we showed our children, children, the wickedness, let them uh, cuss. Let them watch porn on TV, the average day TV. You got to understand there's kissing and hugging and, and, and love making on there. Those kids shouldn't be watching that. So when we're defiling ourselves, the things that we do for our children, we even defile them. And that's why God says the devil came in all ways through your TV, through your radio, pop it like a lick it like a lollipop, pop that pee. All that stuff is defiling and we defiled the things. We defiled the, the next generation by the things that they seen us do. Then we say, don't do as I do. Do as I say, but they're going to do as, the, as you do because they see you do it. Hmm. True. Didn't like to hear that, huh? By your adultery with other gods. That means that you're sitting up there. You're, you're seeking everything but God. Anything that you worship more than God is an idol. Okay, so it says, you sit like a prostitute beside the roads waiting for a customers. You sit alone like a norm in the desert. You have polluted the land with your uh, prostitution. And your wickedness. Hmm. Your wickedness. Now, you know, I, I can sit up there. I'm going to give you some, sit up there, some, some good examples. When I was on drugs, I used to wait for somebody so I can get some money. Prostitute. But when I'm not married, I'm prostituting. I'm defiling God's body. My body is a temple as your body is a, a temple. Jesus Christ came out here and he, 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 he had to be born to die and walk this land to show us, hey, the spirits that the devil get you, you can defeat them. Come to him wholeheartedly, spirit, mind, and body, and let him cleanse you. You got to understand, John the Baptist, you know, we baptize by water. If I go to baptize somebody, I can only do it by water like John the Baptist do it. But in a few days later, once you sit up there and say, you know, Lord, I want you to change all of me, that's when the Holy Spirit of the living God will come in you and cleanse your body. Remember, we don't even know the sins that's lurking in our hearts. And we ask him to cleanse us. These hidden faults that we don't know about us have to take them from, from us in the mighty name of Jesus. And number three, it says... That is, that is why even the spring water rains has failed and everything has failed that's going on. For you are a brisen uh, prostitute and completely shameless. Okay, shameless. Okay, prostitute and completely shameless. 
Yet you say to me, Father, you have been my guide since my youth. Surely you will not be angry forever. And you know what? He won't. God won't. He won't be angry forever. He takes us back in because he's a merciful, forgiving God, loving and compassionate. The most of all is love. Hallelujah. Amen. Surely you can forget about it. So, so I said, listen to this. He said, so you talk, but you keep on doing all the evil you can. God said, stop this. He said, stop this. Stop this. Stop this. Come to him wholeheartedly, spirit, mind, and body. Do what is right. Let the kids see what is right. Stop cussing. Stop telling them, oh, it's okay for me to shock up, but it's not okay for you to shock up because they're going to put those words back at you. You did it, so why can't I? You know, hey, I'm just keeping it real. So on 11, we didn't read. We stopped at number 5 in Jeremiah chapter 3. But on number 11, it says, uh, verse 11. It's chapter, Jeremiah 3, uh, verse 11 says, Then the Lord uh, said to me, Even faithless, listen, faithless Israel is less uh, guilty than the traitor's Judah. Therefore, go and give this message to Israel. This is what the Lord says. O oh, Israel, my faithless people, come home to me again, for I am merciful. I will not be angry with you forever. Only acknowledge your guilt. Admit that you rebelled against the Lord your God and, and committed adultery against him by worshiping idols under every green tree. Confess that you refuse to listen to my voice. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, you're refusing to listen to his voice. You're refusing by doing the things of wickedness and not doing the things of righteousness. When you're sitting up there and you know that you're doing wrong and you won't confess that you're doing wrong because he says, confess thy sins to the Lord in the name of Jesus and he will forgive you. So he says, confess. He says, I've been talking to you from the beginning of time and I'm talking to you now. Hallelujah. Amen. I, the Lord, have spoken. Return home. You wayward children, says the Lord, for I am your master. I will bring you back to the land of Israel, one for this town and uh, two for that family. So he said he's going to bring us back from all the things of wickedness, from the things that we add, and he's going to bring our family. So he said our families, you're bringing them back to hallelujah, amen. So he says, for wherever you were scattered, and I will give you, listen, 15, and I will give you Shepherd after my own heart. So he said right there, know the hearts of his spirit. If you got a pastor out there that's telling you that uh, it's okay to lie, he ain't in the right spirit. If you got a pastor, a preacher, anybody you listen to it says it's okay to shack up, that ain't of God. You got to, when we are ministering the words of God, we got to always live by truth and honesty because we got a God of truth. And when somebody comes to us and asks us a question, well, we're shacking up, is it okay? We say, no, it's not okay with God. We're going to encourage them to get married and do what's right by God. We're going to encourage them to get counseled to make sure that it, they're, they're, they're evenly yoked together. You know, all children are blessings. God knows that we was going to make mistakes, but we got to come into that righteousness because he married a righteous bride. Hallelujah. Amen. And he's telling us, you will see the shepherds by his heart. That's the fruit of the spirit. Because they're going to tell you what's right and not what is wrong. Hallelujah. Amen. I just love you, Lord. Who will guide you. With knowledge and understanding. They're going to understand the word of God. They're going to understand the word of God. And we're going to skip through here. And now we go to 19. We read uh, 11 through 15. We read 1 through 5 first in uh, Jeremiah chapter 3. Then we went to 11 to 15. And now we're on 19. And I don't know how far down we're going to go. So it says right here 19. I thought to myself, and this is the Lord. I thought to myself. I would love to treat you as my own children. I want, I want nothing more than to give you the be this beautiful land, the finest possessions in the world. So he's telling us, I want to give you nice houses. I want to give you nice cars. I want to make sure that you have me, my son, my Holy Spirit, and the things that you desire on this world. But the first thing we're supposed to do is have God's desire. Hallelujah, amen. Woo, hallelujah, amen. The finest possessions in the world. He said, I want to give you all this stuff. It is y'all who's rebelling against me. It ain't me rebelling against y'all because we rebel against him doing our will and not his will. Mm, Lord, tell us. I look forward. Listen to this. I looked forward to your calling me father. He wants us to call him father. In the word of God, uh, the people, they're like, oh, it's your spiritual. Jesus Christ says, don't call no man on earth father. 
Because your father would never abandon you or forsake you or leave you or lie to you. He would be honest with you. So we don't have the right to call nobody on this earth father because our father, God in heaven, would never disrespect us. Even when we do wrong, he's going to do right by us. He's merciful, loving, kind, and compassionate. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. And I want you never to turn from me. And he said, don't turn from me. Call me your father. I love you guys. I will never forsake you, leave you, or abandon you. You're my children. I want to be there for you. I want to give you nice things, but y'all don't want to do what's right, and I have to punish you guys. Oh, hallelujah, amen. But you have been unfaithful to me, you people of Israel. And he's talking about all of us, because when Jesus Christ came down here and was teaching, he was touching the, 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 the Jews and the Gentiles. It became one spirit, one mind, and one body, but the Israelites was chosen to show us Everything that we need to see. And we're supposed to be living by God. Standing behind God. And letting him lead us and guide us. You have been like a unfaithful wife. Who leaves her husband. I the Lord has spoken. Voices are heard high. On the wind sweep. On the uh, wind sweep mountain. The weeping and pleading of Israel's people. For they have chosen crooked paths. And forgotten the Lord their God. My wayward children, says the Lord, come back to me and I will heal your wayward hearts. Hallelujah. 22. Yes, we were coming. The people replied, for you are the Lord our God. Our worship, listen, I worship of idols on the hill and our religion organs on the mountains are uh, dislaunching. Yeah, yeah, dislaunching. Dis 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 only in the Lord our God will Israel ever find salvation. That's the only place you're going to find salvation. The only place you're going to find salvation is in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the only place because he, he died for us. He has always lead us and guide us. And I thank God that he made me do this over because we're going to get this all in one segment. Uh, I want you to turn your Bibles to... Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, because there is so much, there is knowledge out there, but there's no wisdom and understanding. I listen to uh, people posts, and uh, Lamont William, he, you know, he would say some things that make some sense, but the Lord says, keep scrolling down, so I just scroll down, and then there's this uh, gentleman, him and his wife, they, I guess, both preachers, and uh, they was basically preaching that um, there's not no unknown language, and that's why it's very important for us to read this word. And uh, I want you to open up your Bibles. And if you want to dispute my word, please question me back. Please give me scripture. And I know you're going to give the scripture, uh, Lord Jesus, about the, uh, that, you know what, just give it to me. Then we'll go from there because we're doing a sermon. He, well, he's doing, I ain't doing nothing. I'm just letting him use me, keeping it real. And he's like, hey, his words are not, they, they don't contradict yourself because it's the truth is the way to life. That's why God says, come to him with clean hands and pure heart. And sincere lips with your ears open to hear the word of God. God talks to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, it says, let love be your highest goal because without love you have nothing. And there's a lot of people out there that's begging for money. And God says, you don't want to be begging. My kids don't beg. If I want somebody to give you something, they're going to give it to you. Hallelujah. Amen. It said, but you should also desire to listen. Desire the special abilities that the, the spirit gives. Especially the ability to prophesy, for if you have the ability to speak in tongues, listen to this, this is true, for if you have the ability to speak in tongues, you will be talking only to God. Only to God. For people who don't believe in speaking in tongues, you know, God is saying, seek wisdom, ask for wisdom. He won't get mad, he'll give it to you. Since people won't be able to understand you, you will be speaking by the power of the Spirit. Now, is everybody going to speak by the power of the Spirit? No. God knew that everybody wouldn't desire this. God knew us before we was even born. But God is letting us know in his words, and he says, stop being blind to his words. Open your eyes so you can see, hear the word, see the word of God, and hear the word of God. He speaks. Hallelujah. Amen. He says right here, he says, but it will be a mystery. It will be a mystery. In the word of God, he says, there's two things that you can pray for. You can pray uh, to prophesy. 
And he would give you the ability to do that. And you could pray to speak in tongues. But he said, if you pray to speak in tongues, this unknown, unknown language also pray to interpret it. That's the word of God. So God is letting us know that there's a lot of people out there that got snotted, but they don't have wisdom and understanding. They only want to give you some of the word of God. That's why he backs up his words with his word. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, but one who prophesies strengths others, encourage them and comfort them. A person who speaks in tongues is strengthened, is strengthened personally. But ones who speak in the word, a word of prophecy strengthens their entire church. I wish you could all speak in tongues. So he said, I wish you all could do it. I wish you all could do it. He says, but even more, I wish you all could prophesy. So he said, I wish I could all do this. But he knows that it's not going to be in people's heart desires. He, he knows that it's not going to be in your heart's desires. And he knows later on some people will desire it and he's going to give it to you, the ones who desire it. For prophecy is greater than speaking in tongues unless someone interprets what you are saying. So he said, you got to interpret. And the reason why we're right here is because of what's going out there. Lies are going out there. People are lying and said speaking in tongues is not true because they can't speak in it. God said, if you want to speak in it, ask him in the name of Jesus. And he said, act for wisdom. God, it's either in 1 Timothy or, 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 or 2 Timothy or 1 James. Pray for wisdom. He ain't going to get mad. He's going to give it to you. Lord Jesus, hallelujah. For prophecy is greater uh, than speaking in tongues unless someone interprets what you are saying so that the whole church will be strengthened. And then it says, dear brothers and sisters, I should come to you speaking in an unknown language. How would that help you? So he's saying, if you're sitting up there and you're speaking in tongues and the only one that's understanding you is God, it's not going to help nobody else. It's not going to help nobody else. It's a, relation, it's, it's, a, it's a conversation between you and God. I tell people all the time, sometimes God lets me hear the conversation that he's speaking to others when they're speaking in tongues. In tongues. But sometimes he don't. Because it's a, it's a, a, a private conversation. People's going out there saying, oh, that's a lie, that's a lie. No, it's not a lie. Read your word for yourself. If you're not understanding your King James Version, get a life recovery. So you can understand the word of God. Here, the life recovery. So you can understand the word of God. Get your King James. Get your strong kindness. Get your, 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 uh, all your, your dictionaries. And so you could sit up there and read the word and understand and get the wisdom and the understanding. The knowledge don't do you no good without wisdom and understanding. Instead of fighting against each other, you're supposed to be loving them. And, and stop putting people in hell and heaven. We don't have that authority. Only Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus. What we do knows we'll see each other again. And the Lord says, when that first lift come, guess what? He's going to rise of the dead that was in righteousness. He's going to rise up of the living that was in righteousness. But the ones who didn't trust in him, the ones who didn't believe in him, the ones who was faking and shaking, they're going to be left behind. I remember uh, when I was... Uh, in the dark, I said, oh, God's going to leave me here to, to, to help other people through. Life in the pits of hell, I'm going on that first lift. Boo-boo, it's, it's each of us for our own. God ain't going to judge me as he judged you. He's going to judge me for what I did. And he says, if you lie to my children, if you lead my children a long way, my punishment is going to be worse. So I can't lead y'all a long way. I can't lie to y'all. He won't let me. So you got to understand, I can go baptize somebody by water. Uh, Pastor Al Maxi could uh, baptize somebody by water. Apostle Johnny Walker could baptize somebody by water. Timothy Brack could baptize somebody by water. Uh, Pastor Forney could baptize somebody by water. Uh, Pastor uh, um, got a new hope. And, uh, Pastor and, uh, God, like, uh, God, what is his name, Lord Jesus? Well, I got to keep on going. Pastor Avery at... Um, at his church, he can baptize somebody by water. But there's only one person that can baptize by the Spirit, and that's the Holy Spirit of the living God, and he baptized by Father, by fire. And he can only do that with the Father's permission. And that's when your heart is getting right. God's going to know when that heart is getting right, when that Spirit is getting right, and that Spirit is giving in wholeheartedly. When you sit up there and you give yourself, when you give to him wholeheartedly, you can't give 10, 20, 99. you got to get the whole enchilada. The whole enchilada of the Lord. Say, Lord, I submit and surrender all will to you. Lord, I believe in your words. I understand my ears were closed and my eyes were closed. And now they're open. I'm reading your words and studying for myself. That's why we're in this cocoon. And when we come out of the cocoon, we're supposed to be flying by the spear. Baptized by the fire. 
when you're baptized with the Holy Spirit of the living God, you're no more adulterous. You're no more liar. You're no more thief. You don't even glut no more. I, don't, I, I gain weight, but I don't glut like I used to glut. I may eat, but I can't eat nowhere like I used to eat. And I trust and believe in all God's words. When, he, when, I, when I was hollering at the Lord, yes, hollering, I said hollering. And I was like, Lord, I can't do thy will with COVID-19. You got to get rid of it in the name of Jesus. I believe it. Because I'm crying out to him. I'm yelling, I'm screaming, but he knows my heart. I'm crying out to him. I'm crying out to him as you are crying out to him. For healing of the spirit, the mind, and the body in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord loves us. He provides for us. And he takes care of us. And he said, come to me, my children. My wayward children. I'm ready. I want you to come home to your father. Doing my will at free will. As we thank him, as we love him, and we proclaim his beautiful name. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. The name of Jesus. I encourage each and every last one of you guys to find out where God wants you to go worship at and to go worship. I encourage each and every last one of you guys to go out there and talk about Jesus. Tell your testimonies of what he have did for you and your family. How he has put you through and seen you through. And, and when the devil tested you, uh, you, you endured everything that you went through with God. Because when you're going through faith and endurance, that means that you're coming to a, completely, a, a, completion, a completion of that perfect peace. You know, because if you got God, uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 31, if you, got, if you got God, who can be against you? Who can be against you? I love you, you guys. As y'all pray for me, I pray for you guys as we pray for mercy. And as he heals us spiritually, mentally, physically, and financially. As God says, your first desire should be him and not your desire. But he does give us our, 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 our heart's desire. Everybody knows my heart desires to get married and to have children, and he's going to give it to me. But right now, it's all about him. And even when I get married and have children, it's still going to be about him. Because I am a child of God. I am a servant of the Lord. I don't go by titles. A lot of you guys know that I'm a prophetess and an evangelist. A lot of you guys, y'all even fight over that. But it's okay. It doesn't matter what somebody called me, long as they call Jesus. Hallelujah! Amen! Long as they call Jesus. It's the only thing that counts with me. But God is going to show you his sheep because they're going to be after his own heart. That means that your shepherd should not be lying. Your shepherd should not be stealing from the congregation. Your prophet shouldn't be saying, give me some money. Your prophet shouldn't be saying, give me some money. God says, you need to see the ones of his heart. And he said, his children are not beggars. I sit up there. I remember when he had me go to uh, Desert, uh, Desert Sunday to get a car from um, Mr. Martinez, Bobby Martinez. And he was giving it to me. But God took it back. And I'm glad he did, because COVID-19 was coming out there. If God would have gave me that car at that time, I would have been out there trying to help everybody. And that was not the will of God for me. His will for me was to stay in my house and pray. And let him lead me and guide me and trust in him. Oh, no. Oh, oh yeah. There's another new product that, we're gonna, that I'm endorsing. Duclax. Uh, the reason why I am, because uh, the Lord told me that something was wrong with my body. And something was wrong. And I kept telling everybody I ain't used the bathroom. And, um... Also, I was having a urinary tract infection, a severe one. But because of me uh, praying over myself, I wasn't in no pain. But he told me I had to go to the doctor. And when I went, they told me what was wrong. They gave me some medicine there to use the bathroom, but it took a long time. And then God told me to get this Duplex. And so I got it. And um, if you got to work and take care of business, only go to the uh, 30 M, the MLs. Don't take it all because then you'll be crapping all over the place. And that way, if you take it twice a day, Every 12 hours, it's going to start making your system go where it's going to go on its own. I took it for two, two and a half days, and then I was good. And my system is back to using the bathroom. I love you guys. Y'all have a blessed day. Until next week. <laughs> I'll see you guys next week. And y'all going to see a big difference in me because I took off a lot of my weight, but I brought some back. Yes, I did. By just laying in the bed, not moving. I was eating. I wasn't eating a lot, but I just wasn't moving. But now he's got me walking a mile to two a day, even some three so whatever he wants from me, even though when I don't want to do it, I'm going to do it because I love the Lord. See, the thing is when you, when Lord gets you where he wants you to, uh, where he wants to get you and I do fall short of his glory every day. Even with this phone, he told me to get an SD card and I didn't get it. And uh, because the man at the store says, oh, you don't need one. And guess what? I needed one. 
But I'm going to get off this and I pray to God that the whole thing went. When God tells you to do something, just do it. If he tells you you need to go to the doctor, just go. Because he's telling you that there's something wrong and you need uh, some spiritual, mental, but also some something that he has given man technology because he's the one who gives the knowledge to give you something to, to heal what's ever in your body in Jesus' name. I give God the glory, the praise, and honor for everything that he is doing for each and every last one of us. Remember, it's all about the Lord, not about us. And I pray that everybody that's listening to the sound of his voice that's coming through me, that they do what is right and not what is wrong. That they come to that complete peace that Jesus Christ is going to give them. And you find your earthly shepherd. Because God says the season is now and you need to go out there and get the harvest. But he told me don't go out to after June 1st. So I can't go out to after June 1st. God is telling you to go out now. Go out now. Our orders are the same, but they're different. Me, he's just like, stay in there, stay in there, stay in there, wait, wait. I got to stay in here, wait, but I do go for a walk. I praise God for what he's doing for all, everything he did from the beginning to the end, because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I love you guys. As I keep you guys up in prayer, uh, I pray that you keep me up in prayer in Jesus' name, me and my family, because you know what? As they went through it, as we went through it, they're going through it. But God is going to get his children back because he says, Father, I have not lost not one that you entrusted to my hand. Y'all have a blessed day in the name of Jesus.